it seems to me, at least from what I'm seeing, the Thin Line is getting a, quite a bit of coverage lately. Tim Wildsmith has been featuring the CSB Thin Line. Uh, Tim Frisch did, just did a video on how the Thin Lines have evolved over the past few years. And then I even know Joe from Joe's Bibles loves Thin Line Bibles. And uh, he may even be reading a CSB Thin Line here soon. And so, Joe, highly recommend it. Uh, if you haven't thought about it already, I would suggest it. Uh, if you guys don't know already, the CSB Thin Line is my everyday carry for right now uh, as I'm reading through the CSB. But I wanted to show off, uh, as I was inspired from these other videos, I wanted to show off my favorite Thin Line layout of all time in, honestly, one of my favorite leather covers, the Buffalo Leather Thin Line from Crossway in the ESV. Now the ESV obviously isn't my translation of choice, but you guys did see this video featured in my CSB Thin Line review where I compared the two because I think this is the gold standard when it comes to Thin Lines. It's, the Thin Line is supposed to be a really nice compact carry, but it's large enough to allow for a decently readable format. And so it's a good Bible that's under an inch thick. It's an eight by five Bible, which tends to be the Goldilocks size for Bibles. Um, and it's it's not too small that it can't allow for good readable uh, uh, font, but it's not too big that you don't want to carry this around everywhere with you, uh, that it can't be considered portable. I think this is as portable as you can get while still maintaining a good readable format. But anyways, before we get into the Bible, um, here's the, the clamshell box. I bought this from Mardell's for much cheaper than $80. I promise you that. They offer a 30% discount once per day off of any item. So I got 30% off of this Bible. I generally see it for about 40 to 50 bucks online. Uh, I know you do get 30% off on Crossway's website if you sign up for an account with your email. And so you can definitely get this Bible for cheaper. The clamshell box looks really clean nowadays in their modern editions of the ESV. This particular Bible is printed in 2021, so I've, I've had it for some time. There's the features in case you need it. Many of you may find the 8.5 uh, typeface really scary but I will say if you have decent reading eyesight your nearsighted vision is still decently healthy I would say do not be afraid the lexicon font is perfect for these smaller font sizes anyways don't want to belabor the point and just look at the box let's take a look here on the outside of the Bible we've got this really nice buffalo leather it's quite pliable as you can see here I've trained the yap around the text block of the Bible. It's not wavy at all, like a lot of the young blood goat skins tend to be. I know the full yap Skylar Quintels get really wavy when you try to train the yap on the uh, goat skin editions. I think even the, the thin calf skins have that issue too, though I haven't tried the aniline calf skin. Anyways, it's much softer than genuine leather, uh, especially the genuine leather from Crossway themselves. But it's stiff enough that like it's it's not really floppy. It feels like a good leather for sure. And if, if you had a leather liner, like perhaps it could be a decently floppy Bible. But I'll just hold it by the spine here. I won't even hold the whole Bible. As you can see there, it, it, it lays pretty flat. It has a bit of curvature, maybe from some use. But it's a really good book binding leather. It, it stays pretty flat. You can hold it open with one hand and it's no issue at all. And so I love holding this Bible. Many of you like your crazy floppy Bibles, but for me personally, I think this is one of the perfect leathers. It's got a really nice stamped grain too. It feels really good in the hand. And the, the struggle I have sometimes with cow hides and calf skins is that they tend to be very slippery and it's hard to hold on to them. And when you're holding it open with one hand at an angle, it tends to slip down your hand. But Buffalo leather has a nice grip to it. I think the texture helps it a lot there. And so, there's just something about this. It feels really good to hold in the hand. It also helps that they can cut it really thin. It's definitely a thinner um, uh, bounded leather on this on this text block. And so it makes the thin line feel like a proper thin line. It doesn't feel like a mid-sized Bible. Uh, it actually feels like a legitimate thin line. As you can see there, they have really nice, thin, tight stitching around the perimeter. I love the look of that kind of stitching. I'm not a big fan of large thick threads 
with a bunch of space in between the holes. I, I think that makes for kind of a, a bit of a juvenile look. I like how clean the uh, perimeter stitching looks on Crossway Bibles. They have ra raised spine hubs even on their mid-tier Bibles, which is really good to see. However, one gripe I do have here on the spine is, as you can see, the gold printing on the side is wearing off quite a bit, and I don't think it's stamped in. If it is stamped in, it's not st stamped in very deep. And so this stuff is going to wear off not too long from now. And I haven't been using this Bible a lot. I used it for a decent amount of time when I first got it. But after that, it's been in the box since then. And so that's unfortunate. Uh, as you can see here, the back is totally blank. No ISBN number or anything like that. Generally, that's the case with uh, most leather Bibles. And then we have a dark brown head and tail band. As you can see here, I've replaced the single ribbon they used to have with these double-sided 3 8 inch satin ribbons. The original one, I believe it was only a single-sided um, 1 8 inch ribbon in dark brown. And so this is a much needed improvement. That's a, the wonderful thing about these mid-tier Chinese prints of the Bible from Crossway is it's really easy to remove the headband and replace the ribbon. Not difficult at all. Unlike their premiums. Their premiums are so hard to get the ribbons taken out of. Anyways, uh, there's the corners in case you wanted to see those. They're quite messy. It's an interesting contrast from the rest of the Bible, which generally looks pretty clean. And then we have a vinyl liner, which is obviously very outstanding. M most leather Bibles at least come with a uh, vinyl liner. They do appear to have reinforcement there in the middle, which will help this Bible last a long time. I can even expect, if I use this Bible every day, I, I could probably uh, make it last a lifetime. And so I really love vinyl liners. They help the Bible, uh, vinyl paste down specifically. They really allow for the Bible to lay super flat, even near Genesis, like we'll see here in a second, the first book of Genesis, I can make the Bible lay completely flat. So I absolutely love this. Though a leather liner does feel really good and it lasts longer and it won't crease or tear and having an edge line makes it last longer. I just, there's something about paste down vinyl Bibles. Anyways, these first few pages of, of paper here are a cardstock, a thick glossy cardstock. So I don't find much use for these. I, I'm not tempted to write on them, mostly because they're glossy. Um, same with the presentation page. The marriage, birth, births, and deaths pages are all glossy cardstock before getting to the first page of the Bible, the title page here, which is on a, I believe it is a 28 GSM Chinese paper. It may be somewhat coated, but it's not like a plasticky coating. It definitely feels smoother, and it doesn't make your finger drag across the page like a lot of really cheap Chinese Bibles do. But it's not a high-quality paper by any means. I would say for Chinese paper, it's, it's pretty decent. It definitely feels decent. There's the other title page, and then going on to the copyright page. This particular edition was printed with the 2016 text in 2021. It is a Chinese Bible. I know some of you guys don't like that, but uh, that's just the way it be sometimes. Maybe y'all can convince Crossway in the comments to switch to Korea or India or something. There's the features page and then right into the Old Testament. I love what they do here with the first word, the word the. They have this nice cursive accent and then they go into this really classic clean font. That really gives the Crossway aesthetic uh, it's it's look it's overall feel you can kind of see the text on the other side of the page it definitely the ghosting itself can be pretty meh at, at, at spots it's definitely not a very uh, great paper for ghosting but it, it doesn't bleed through at all whatsoever I'd say it's comparable to the CSB thin line and the ghosting we see in that Bible uh, but it's not anywhere close to the ESV single column thin line or the ESV personal size thin or personal size single column. Not anywhere close to those Bibles. Those Bibles are horrible with bleed through and ghosting. Anyways, like I said, 
uh, right off the bat, I when I first bought this Bible, I didn't even have to train this. It just immediately lays flat, which I absolutely love about this Bible. I think especially for thin lines, a Bible this thin, you want it to lay flat. Otherwise, uh, most of your Bible, or at least a good portion of it, it's not going to be able to lay flat because it's such a small and thin Bible. The paper is not going to weigh down the, the tab enough. As we can see here, it's a, a double column format as we're used to with thinline Bibles, though it does have more words per line than some other uh, more compact editions. It, it tends to have around five to seven words per line on average, uh, which is really, really good. I think when you compare it to like the PSQ or the Quintels or the large print thin line from Crossway, they tend to have less words per line because either the font is larger or they're making room for references, say in like Allen's NC1 in the ESV. So it's a very readable format. You don't have to cut down to the next line every, as, as frequently as you do in other Bibles. So I really like that look. They also give ample room in the inner and outer margin. I believe it's about a half inch. So really, really good. Uh, prevents the text from leaning into the gutter too much. And you also have some room to put some symbols. I even saw a guy post today. Uh, the the marginal notes he was writing and he was able to write a good amount of notes on his thin line which is amazing as you can probably tell especially near the bottom of the bible this bible is not line match that's the one other gripe i have with it but otherwise it's a fantastic bible i don't know if they'd have to make this bible thicker in order to line match it if that's the case i wouldn't want them to line match it because i love how thin this bible is but for many of you i know you struggle with that and the paper is already not that great and so i can see ghosting if if you already have trouble with even minimal amount of ghosting i would say this bible probably isn't for you but if that doesn't bother you as much i'd say for me personally it doesn't so i can find myself diving into this bible every time i read it the uh the verse numbers, chapter numbers, and the, the headings are all in black. The only thing that's a separate color is the maps, obviously, in the back. And then the words of Christ are in a nice crimson red. We'll look at those here in a second. So, very clean looking Bible. It's not a reference Bible. They do have some references in the translator notes, but otherwise, that's all you're going to get is the translator notes on the bottom. I don't find them very easy to navigate. It's... No, there's nothing remarkable about Crossway's translator notes and, and how they format them. And like same in the text itself, obviously they denote them with these really small numbers. I much prefer what the CSB does with their thin line, where they use capital letters respectively for each note. It's really easy to spot them and it's uh, they have high utility in my opinion versus these really small numbers. I like that the verse numbers are semi-bold. Not as good as the CSB thin line, but still comparable for sure. Very good. We spent way too much time in the book of Genesis here. Let's go to the poetry here in the Psalms. As you can see here, they do have a verse by verse format. However, uh, Randy Brown's not going to like this very much. They do have lines where sometimes there's only one word. And so they break it up a bit awkwardly for some readers, but for me personally, I don't find that to be a stumbling block. I really like the look of the Thin Lines poetry. But that's just one man's opinion. There's the Proverbs. And then let's go straight into the New Testament here. There's the book of Matthew. As you can see, you can see the crimson, red letter, um, this is the third and probably last gripe I have with this Bible, is that they put the verse numbers in red. Why? Why must you do this? At least the subheadings are in black. I can at least commend you for that crossway. But verse numbers being in red, maybe that saves them money. I don't, I'm not sure if that's the case, but I, I don't like that in particular. I find the red letter to be pretty consistent throughout. And I do like how dark it is, though I would prefer it being a black letter Bible. So hopefully I will get my hands on Evangelical Bibles exclusive green goatskin edition with the black letter text. So that's the New Testament for you. In case you're curious about that, I'll give you a closer look in case you want to get a good idea of what the ghosting is like. Definitely could be distracting. I can see why some people wouldn't like it. For me personally, 
Not a big deal. If they could somehow maintain the thinness of this Bible and, and get it line matched at the same time, I would buy it in a harpy easily. Let's go to the back of the Bible. Right after Revelation 22 is your table of weights and measures. And then going on to the concordance. Uh, funnily enough, they do have abbreviations right after concordance. <laughs> and then they get into the concordance. And so. But that makes sense. You do need the abbreviations denoted so you can make use of the concordance. It does appear to be a smaller font even than the eight point font that's in the Bible text. I, I, it looks to be maybe a six to seven point font. And it's not in that lexicon. I find that strange. I'd like to see it in the lexicon typeface. So it's a, it's a decent size uh, concordance. I, I, I think it's nice that they included it uh, in a thin line edition, though I think probably one trade off I would do for this Bible to make it thinner, uh, line match the Bible and maybe make it a bit thicker, but get rid of the concordance. Some of you guys may disagree, but I think that would be awesome. Get rid of the concordance, maybe even get rid of the maps. Though, I kind of like that the maps help weigh down the, uh, the leather cover so that it lays flat. Anyways, as you can see here, we've got glossy cardstock again for the maps. Thick, glossy cardstock. Not really able to take notes on this like very efficiently, but Maybe some of you can make the, the glossy cardstock work. I'd love to see more diagrams included in the ESV Bibles in general. Especially a lot of those ESV study Bible diagrams. I'd like to see those included in the back of these Bibles. That'd be cool. Though, again, that may make it thicker. So maybe not. As you can see here, this final map is kind of glued a bit to the final page of the Bible, the cardstock. Um, and so, yeah, uh, that's something to keep in mind, though it doesn't really affect the usage of the map itself. I just, I just wouldn't pull that apart. And then you only get one. This is a matte page attached to the end sheet, but it's just the one blank page before you get to the back with the liner. So, anyways, yeah, that, this was a review of my favorite thin line Bible available today. If I could have it in every translation, I would pick it up immediately. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have this Bible, let me know what your experience is. Uh, also, I'd love to hear if you guys like using thin line Bibles. Uh, if you do, let me know why. If you don't, I'd also like to hear what your opinion is to see, you know, kind of what some of the trade-offs are that, that really break, break the what are the, the straw on the camel's back for you and so with these bibles but anyways uh thank you guys so much for your support lately all your comments i love reading them even the ones that are a bit more challenging that have differing opinions i love chatting with you guys in the comments even if it seems like uh <laughs> i don't i promise you i do if i respond to you it's because i want to so um, if you guys have any prayer requests, please feel free to leave it down below or send me an email, wontondisciple at gmail.com. You can also message me on Instagram at wontondisciple. If you'd like to send me private prayer requests, uh, be, please be praying for me, uh, me and my fiance. Of course, we want to continue to pursue each other in godly ways and uh, honor God by giving our lives over to him and pursue him through ministry. And so, uh, anyways... Uh, I love to see your guys' comments. Please leave them down below, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.